the Idaho Supreme Court hearing uh, some of the Brian Koberger case, making a significant ruling in it uh, regarding uh, their motion to dismiss. Uh, of course, Koberger accused of the quadruple murder the University of Idaho students on the campus on Tuesday. Uh, the court denied Koberger's appeal request to toss out his grand jury indictment, making it a pivotal moment in the ongoing legal proceedings because you know they, they actually could have done that. The odds were not great, but they could have done that. In response to the appeal, the uh, court granted Koberger's request to seal the contents of his motion, adding a, another layer of confidentiality to the proceedings. Koberger's appeal to dismiss the grand jury indictment has been denied by the Idaho Supreme Court. State of the uh, court's ruling, revealing the decision on the pivotal legal maneuver. However, the court further added, we've granted the request to seal documents pertaining to the appeal. Amid the uh, legal saga surrounding Brian Co Koberger's case, the defense raised a critical point, alleging that jurors received improper instructions during the indictment process. They argue that the standard probable cause has been mistakenly applied instead of the more stringent beyond a reasonable doubt. A uh, criterion typically reserved for convicting suspects, not indicting them. The problem lies within uh, Idaho, where a very, very old thing on the book says beyond a reasonable doubt, but that's not how you indict someone. So it just... And nobody's ever gone back and corrected it, basically, is what it comes down to. Which they need to, if, yes. if they're going to hold I, it I, to that standard. I think they need to change it, because if we're going to argue legalese, uh, let's make sure it's correct. Well, and aren't there some states, I, I always remember this one, I because I'm from Minnesota, I think you can't put like a duck on your head, it's illegal. You can't some, put it, like that's just a law? It's just a law in the book. Something about you can't put a or maybe it's a wet duck. I don't, I don't, it's some absolute bizarre thing, but it's still sitting on the books. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to enforce this, they absolutely could. Howard, uh, I'm gonna look it up. Okay. Uh, despite acknowledging the defensive creative arguments, which they are, I mean, they're, I guess, historical. Lado County Judge, uh, John Judge, you also can't have a judge named Judge, but they do, <laughs> uh, dismiss the appeal in January. He cited legal precedent emphasizing that the standard of beyond a reasonable doubt was not mandatory for the indictment purposes because it never has been. Yeah. But uh, Ann Taylor, being the attorney you probably want if you slaughtered four college students, uh, she tried to argue it. She argued it with, uh, with John Judge, and now she took it to the Supreme Court, and that's where the argument ends. Under, uh, uh, I did find what I was looking for, by the way. Oh, I will go to that in a second. Undeterred by the ruling, Koberger's public defender took the case to the state Supreme Court. Despite her efforts, the court stood by its decision, maintaining the indictment's validity. The ruling upholds the integrity of the grand jury process, remarked a spokesperson for the prosecution, emphasizing the importance uh, of adhering to legal standards in such high-profile cases. Uh, the uh, defense has requested to relocate the trial from Lado County, uh, where the murder case and all of it took place in this aftermath has captivated its population of 40,000 people late in 2022. A hearing for this motion opposed by prosecutors is scheduled for May 14th. Koberger faces four counts of first-degree murder, one count of burglary in connection with the deaths of Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Kernodal and Madison Mogan, who were found stabbed to death in the house near the University of Idaho campus. There is still going to be a lot more motions and hearings in this, uh, as we still don't even have a firm trial date. Uh, another hearing scheduled for April 17th to address Koberger's request to move the trial out of Lado County, uh, a motion based on those concerns of the publicity. Here's the deal. No matter where you go, it's, it's the biggest case in the country. It will continue mm -hmm. to be until it has uh, taken place. But right now, something more important. This is a special report from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Breaking news on duck legislation in the state of Minnesota. Here's Stacey Cole with the latest. At this time of this recording, it is illegal to cross state lines with a duck on your head. Okay, you cannot 
enter Minnesota from another state while wearing a chicken or a duck on your head. And although the history of this law is yet unknown, it is still in force and on the books today as we speak. So it's is it simply entering the state or once you're in the state, can you take a native duck and put it on your head? Or is this strictly while crossing state lines? Crossing state lines. You cannot do it with a duck atop your head. So you can carry a duck in, though, like, say, from Wisconsin uh, over the Mississippi. It just can't be on your head. Well, citizens may not enter Wisconsin either with a chicken on their head. So you do need to be careful which which fowl and poultry you put on your head and then cross state lines. That's good news to have. I think it's something a lot of us have contemplated many times throughout our life. Uh, And it's good to know uh, what the laws are so we don't face incarceration. That's our latest poultry and fowl update. Stay with us for more. This has been a special report from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Okay, back to Koberger now. Um, I'm glad we we got that uh, that bit of information. Um, Yeah. So they tried it. They went where they went all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, fuck off. Uh, which I mean, yeah. what, what's amazing. I wonder how much money, how many taxpayer dollars were spent. So uh, Ann Taylor could make that argument. There's you know? a lot of money being spent in this community on this case, and it hasn't even started yet. Well, they had, they'd spent thousands of dollars early on. Uh, on uh, media experts that went in and said, and just to say, oh, so and so has so much clout over this case, or so and so is influencing the case this way, or public opinion this way. Who cares? What does that? What does that even matter? What does yeah. that even matter at the end of the day? Hundreds of thousands of dollars of packed taxpayer money went to them saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's so insane that uh, like that, that Jennifer Coffin Daffer uh, has made these statements, which she was in the report and, you know, she's on with us every day uh, that, that her statements out there on the case were affecting the case. It's wow. insane. But people are going to be talking about these cases. They are absolutely sensational. Uh, there were, it was a horrific crime. There are four people who are dead. Yeah. Uh, this has captivated the nation, if not the world. This was being talked about over in the UK, for heaven's sakes. People want, they want some closure to this case. So, yeah, people are going to talk about it. We're still talking about OJ Simpson and the, the car chase. I've heard that come up in the last week or two for some reason. So these things stick with people. That's how, how people work. We love a good yeah. train wreck. Yeah, I think you're you're right. I just don't know why on earth those dollars. There need to be a little bit more oversight, I think, on like where the dollars can be spent or not. I get on the defense, but I mean, come on. I mean, what are we trying to prove here with yes, people are talking about this case. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, it's 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 kind of like a given. Like, yes, they are talking about it. Uh I'm glad we could spend a hundred thousand dollars confirming that that is indeed going on. Um I don't know. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's baffling. Do you think I mean, I've made a, a gazillion arguments against this uh, of moving the the case somewhere else, because that's what they're going to try and do. That's going to be probably the argument of the summer in the uh, Koberger saga. Uh, and I'll probably go back and forth a bit. In my opinion, look, this community has has been going through hell. They've been dragged through hell uh, with all of this. Uh, a lot of media descending on the town, a lot of gawkers, probably more than media, descending on the town with the morbid, you know, uh, true crime tourism that exists. Um, should it be moved somewhere else? or Well, then you're going should- to subject yet another community to the same yeah. sensationalism. Are you going to get a better building? Are you going to get an unbiased jury pool in another community compared to here, though? No, I I really don't think so, unless you move it to an entirely different state. And still, who knows, you may end up with a jury pool of people who listen to us, for example, or or sit and watch, you know, court TV all day long. There, People with Internet, YouTube, TikTok, everybody has exposure to this. You're not going to find somebody who hasn't heard of this. I mean, maybe to certain details, but... 
the the general population out there has a working knowledge of who Brian Koberger is. Well, and I also say this too, is do is it a fair trial if the, the, your people on the jury have no clue about the case? I mean, I, that that also speaks to me about that individual's in touch with reality or in touch with with society and, and what's going on current around events. them and current events. Uh, if if you are going to move this anywhere in that area and somebody has zero clue that this has happened at all, I don't know that that's going to be the most objective juror either or or the most well thought out juror if they're that oblivious to something this big that's happening around them. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's always a weird thing when it comes to juries of being oblivious to your surroundings and going, those are the ones we want on the jury. <laughs> you know? Well, when I was uh, being questioned for a jury this past summer, uh, there was somebody that they were questioning who admitted that they have never used a computer. <laughs> it's 2024. I wouldn't want that person. Yeah, and and the case that that I was being set up for was a uh, pornography case. It was somebody who was caught with, I believe it was nine or ten pictures of child porn. Yeah, and so they were asking about our computer ability and mm -hmm. you know how often do we use computers? What do we use computers for? And the one person on the jury who is or not on the jury but being uh, questioned said, "I've never used a computer," and and the attorney actually kind of stepped back and said, well, you've used one. You just don't have one. And they said, no, I've never been on a computer before. Then you that shouldn't be on that jury at all. I mean, you need to have at least an understanding. It's like saying, I've never seen an automobile and it's an automobile accident that you're trying right. to, you know, right. yeah, figure out there. I actually, so, yeah, it's very important to have at least a, a background knowledge yeah. of, of things. You know, do you want like a knife manufacturer person on the jury for Brian Koberger? I don't know. Are no. you too much of an expert at that point? Hard to say. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, something like that, I think might work in my hands here. I hold my jury summons that I just got in the mail yesterday. Oh, no. Well, you know what? Luckily, take my, ex it's, take for, my, um, it's for the um, wrong experience. county. All you have to do is tell them what you do for a living. <laughs> and, oh, I plan um, on doing that. Crime podcast producer got me booted right away. Uh, I'm going to, uh, well, I don't even need to do that because it's actually for the wrong county. Uh, it's for the county below me because they be they believe they still have me uh, registered there uh, mm -hmm. since I moved up to another county a year ago. So all I have to do is check the box and say, not a resident of the county anymore. Yeah. Um, well, that'll help you. But uh, after that, I think I would just put a link up to the podcast and go, do That's you, what I did. Do you really want me as a juror? Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.